Lionel, it's your 40th Ironman 70.3 start, 30th win, but then 36th podium. How does it feel? Ah, oh, it feels like I'm just getting started, to be honest with you. I feel like that was my last amateur race, and uh, 2022, I'm gonna go pro. But uh, no, I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's weird to think about that I've been doing this now. Next year will be my 10th pro season. And, you know, I was going up against some new guys in this race, some guys it was literally their first time, Vincent Louis and Helly Gaines, literally their first 70.3, and it's just weird to think that my first 70.3 as a professional was in 2013. So this race, I definitely knew that if I wanted to do well, I was going to have to call upon all of that experience because these guys certainly uh, possess more speed than I do, but I had to use my experience to my advantage. Going into race week this week, the tension was really starting to build. Not necessarily tension, but the excitement to race top level guys. I think there was tension. <laughs> I think there, there still is a little bit of tension between the ITU guys and the long course guys. I, I think it's more probably the long course guys are kind of feel slighted a little bit. Um, just because, you know, like we specialize, right, in this. And I think guys look from the sidelines and they're like, oh yeah, I mean, I can do a lot better than that, but they don't have any experience. And so I feel like we feel like, guys, like we're pretty good too. Don't get me wrong, you guys are great swimmers, much better than us, but like we have honed this bike run combo, you know, very, very far. And so I feel like we constantly have to uh, prove ourselves over and over again, as, as happened in Daytona and which I believe a couple of the long course guys, including myself here, kind of felt that we just have to continue to prove that we are pushing the limit of, of the bike run combo of, you know, a three hour and 10 minute bike run combo. And so, so there was tension, undoubtedly. Uh, I, I felt like I had something to prove, even though it was my 40th professional 70.3, I still felt like I'm the guy who's got something to prove. And, and that was the case all the way to the finish line. I, and I still, unfortunately, uh, feel like I still have something to prove. You don't get something for nothing. I've been doing this a long time. And the harder you bike, the slower you run. And Gustav has achieved a, a, an excellent balance between the three. He's even conscious of the fact that the swim takes out something out of you. In Daytona, Gustav raced uh, amazingly well from a tactical standpoint and that he didn't get involved in the tactics in the front and over bike. He just kept them at, in check, rode kind of in the middle by himself, and then came off and out ran everyone. And Sam and I, for instance, in Daytona, were just surging, surging, doing everything we could to try and catch the front. It was a you know, horrible way to, to bike if you plan to run well after. And that's what I mean about the experiential standpoint. I have, I have all of these experiences. I've done races, literally I've come out in last place and biked through the field. Like I, I have a lot of experience in the bike run combo. And so, yeah, I get offended actually when people think that, that um, you know, I'm gonna get destroyed on the run. Well, 
I would run a lot faster if I had, didn't have to bike so hard. And so if you, if you look at that lesson in this particular race, I knew that if I couldn't catch the front, and that was basically the tactic, was ride hard until mile 25 and find out how much time you pull back. And if you're not gonna catch the front, then you're going to have to run down the front. And therefore you have to bike a lot easier so that you can have your run. And I rarely get that opportunity to bike easy, you know, or easier, I'm not saying it's easy, but easier, 10 or 15 watts less than, than hard. Um, and so here I, I knew that I was going to have to do that and, and that's and it ended up being what I had to do. Race morning, you get down there to the swim start, the gun goes, how'd you feel? I, I felt great, preparation was good, that two weeks was great. Um, my, I, like I said, you can't get upset when you're progressing literally every single workout, you're getting better and better and better, which is a testament I believe to the aerobic training that I was absorbing the training rapidly, the high-end training rapidly, I believe because I had improved my aerobic base. And so everything was good. I, I knew that this was just gonna come down to really uh, experience how well you play your cards and who's willing to suffer more. And I came in like as hungry, uh, per perhaps as hungrier than I've ever been to suffer and to, to battle. And I haven't really been in the thick of it, you know? I've done, the, uh, done quite a few Ironmans this year where I literally wasn't like really in the dynamic of the race. Just that last one with Gustav, did I get to taste it again? And uh, that was really motivating. And so I wanted to be part of it and put, apply pressure right to the finish. And so uh, swimming wise, it was a really big field. I didn't really get into a good position. And, uh, and my swim showed that. I believe I could have been 45 seconds to a minute up the, up the water with the right mindset going in that I was going to have to take it out a bit faster and a bit harder. Oh well, uh, gap right out of the water, water's edge was 240 to Vincent. I didn't cut the bottoms. These are all my amateur, it's my last amateur race. So these are some of my amateur mistakes. Uh, I didn't have the bottom of my wetsuit cut the legs a little bit so that the wetsuit would come off easy. Lost some time there trying to get the bottom of the wetsuit off my legs. And you can't, you can't have these mistakes going up against a guy like Vincent who has absolutely honed transitioning to the absolute limit doing these super league races. So then got out onto the bike just past the mount line. I was 315 down. So I, now I had lost about 35 seconds in transition unnecessarily. And then with my shoes I'm using, I don't have them uh, f figured out a way to have them elastic so that they're up right. And I went to mount the bike and one of my shoes got caught under and then I pedaled and then it got stuck and then I almost fell off and then I had to start the whole process over again. So another poor, just, you know, lesson. And uh, I ended up, I would say, getting actually out onto the bike course closer to 340 down. So I lost almost a minute between you know, water's edge and actually pedaling the bicycle. So that's just absolutely unacceptable at this level of racing. And when I turn professional, uh, I won't make those mistakes anymore. I'm gonna practice that and, and hone that greatly. Out onto the bike, I held uh, by my power meter, which I believe reads about 20 watts high to true. I averaged 370 watts until 25 miles. In that time, I brought the deficit down to about 2.15. So that means I probably actually on the bike pulled back about a minute 15 in 25 miles. In my mind, I knew then I was not gonna catch Vincent and I went into the, to the damage control plan where I have to run really well. And so then I lapsed the bike computer and uh, held about 360 watts up until the racetrack portion, lapped it again held about 320 watts through the technical racetrack portion, which once again, going up against Vincent and Heli Gaines, I mean, uh, I'm not on their level of handling. And this was a, quite a technical course with a lot of corners that undoubtedly I'm losing time on. Uh, survived the racetrack section, got back out onto the open roads, bridged the gap up to uh, Heli's group, which contained Andy Potts and a couple other guys. Uh, sat in at the back for a few minutes, saw Haley get the drafting penalty. I saw the, the ref go right up to him and show him the card. Um, that was, you know, unfortunate, of course. And then went by those guys. And then about, I would say, five kilometers from transition, I'm like, is that the lead vehicle? And that doesn't make any sense. 
I figured I was probably a little under two minutes down to Vince at this time. Uh, and then all of a sudden I was like, that is the lead vehicle. That, that's Vince right there. That's really weird. And so then I bridged the gap to him and uh, we came off the bike side by side. I knew he was gonna push the transition yet again. So I really pushed that transition. Uh, came out right next to him out onto the run course, saw that he was all bloody. Um, didn't, I just figured he crashed, to be honest with you, so I didn't want to uh, ask any questions. But then when, we, when he went by his girlfriend, Taylor Spivey, uh, she said, oh, Vince, did you crash? And he's like, no, I got hit by an effing car. And then I was like, oh, damn, and I asked him about it then. And then we, then we, the tension got cut, and I was like, oh, damn, that's super shit, man. And, you know, I, I, in a moment, you're, you're like, this sucks. And, but I, I, I have to keep pushing. Um, I figured in his mind, actually, it could be deadly for me and that he would like to win the race all bloody and, and you know, have, have, having had that adversity, he actually might be motivated by that, and, and as I would be as well. And he definitely hit the first 5K really hard, and I just tucked in behind. Um, and then around mile four on the ups, I started to feel the, the power reduction and I started to actually come up next to him. And then there's a sandy section, approximately 200 meters. Uh, we were side by side and then I actually started to open up a gap without any surge or anything. And so then I just kept the pressure on and I never really accelerated or anything. I just kept my, my pace steady and he started to fall off and then I just kept it steady to the finish. And, you know, uh, it's a great course. It's a, it's a golf course, cross country style course, which I, I, I believe, you know, I run well on. It's back to my roots where I learned to run. Uh, but it wasn't very satisfying, you know? It's like, a, it's a pretty hollow win, admittedly. Uh, you know, I, I, I think I could have battled. I think, I think head to head to head, the three of us, Heli got a five minute penalty. He outran me by a minute. He, he ran uh, 108.18, I ran 109.19. Vince would have been, I believe about, because I was, I was riding steady 360 right to the finish and I had no lull. I believe I would have been about 90 seconds down coming off the bike. Um, I think it would have been a, a, a great battle if me and Heli come off together. I, when Vince and I were running side by side for the first 7.6K, I, the, the three of us literally to the second were running even. I think we were 25, 35 through 7.6K, something like that, to the second. And I mean, that would have been the most epic battle, I believe, in, in 70.3 in a long time, having three guys from all different directions going at it. So it's a hollow win. Uh, I, I look forward, I know where I stand, you know, I don't think my prep was ideal for it. I know I have a lot to improve on, I know I have a lot of fitness to gain. Their prep wasn't ideal for it, they were just racing WTS races a month ago. So we all have our reasons, our excuses, we'll never know what would have happened. But it shows me that I'm not that far off, it still motivates me, I still got outrun by a minute. It still motivates me to get better. Um, and now I believe that I've got the aerobic base up. We can start to pay more attention to the threshold and we can get, get at a higher level and then also improve on the little things like the transitions and the cornering, et cetera, et cetera. So it was a great race. I just wish we could have got the battle that, that, uh, that I think all three of us wanted to partake in. Yeah. I mean, no, you deserve it. No, no, no I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, were, <laughs> I, I, you were a machine, mate. You were you're a machine. <laughs> shit happens. Wow, that's uh, unfortunately that's really shitty, yeah, man. Damn it. You were the best. No worries. Cheers, man. Give me a fair rate. Cheers. Uh, cheers. Congratulations, man. Do see you. Felicitations. So sorry today, mate. Uh, wasn't uh, you know what we expected from you out there. Um, unfortunately, uh, just having a crash, but. You're such a great athlete and such a champion to get up off the ground and continue. Yeah, you know, I was I was pushing good watts. I was happy uh, with my with my fall and in the lead, and, and uh, I think I got something like two minutes gap. And uh, yeah, I was really looking forward to to have this gap on Lionel because I know I was pushing high watts for my for my way. So, and uh, yeah, I got hit by a car, um, hit the ground, and uh, and then after that, I was just like, um, it, it was all about uh, managing to get a slot forwards next year. But I want to say um, kudos to Lionel, I think he would have won the race anyway. 
So uh, he's, he's an animal, and uh, yeah, I'm really happy I raced him, and, uh, and hopefully we can race again soon. Um, at one point on the run, uh, I believe um, someone gave you, you said someone gave you a split that you were like 440 to uh, Yella. Did you want to try to outrun him and make sure you're five minutes ahead of him? Could you, did you have any more in the tank, or was that everything you had I, in the tank? I, I undoubtedly had more in the tank. I mean, I'm good today. I literally was jogging after the race. Like, I'm good. Like, your mind, I've been doing this long enough to know that you need other people next to you in order to find what your limits are. You cannot do it solo. You cannot do it with a bicycle in front of you because your, your mind knows that's a bicycle. That is not another person who swam, biked as hard as I did, and now we're running together. So knowing that Heli's five minutes back, uh, it does absolutely nothing for me. I mean, whatever to the fastest run split, it's about winning the race and going toe to toe with guys. And so, no, I mean, I do believe I had more. This is all, it's, it's, it's of no relevance, right? Because who cares what you think? Everyone thinks they have this and that and this and that would have happened. I feel that I had more. I feel that I could have went toe to toe with all three of these guys. And I feel that it would have been a great battle very deep into the race. And I don't know who would have won without these pieces of adversity happening to everyone. Um, it's super shit. Vince fortunately is not too banged up. He's all scraped up, but he's no broken bones, um, which, is, which is great. Uh, sucks he's going on vacation and now, you know, probably gonna have to avoid the ocean uh, for a few days, which is super shit. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's a real testament to his character. I think 99% of people would have gotten pissed off there on the side of the road, through the bike, got mad at everybody else uh, and then abandoned the race. And instead he just got right back up, got on his bike and said, I'm gonna try and damn well win this race regardless. So that uh, real hats off to him. I look forward to battling him again under ideal circumstances for all of us. And I do believe it'll be a good battle. Uh, there'll be a lot of people out there that uh, you, you know as well as I know, there's a big, almost tension amongst the, like you've mentioned earlier, between short course and long course people. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that probably say, ah, the only reason Lionel won was because Yella got a five minute penalty and Vincent crashed on the bike and he doesn't deserve that win. Do, do you have any comment to that or thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I did six straight months Ironman training. I raced five Ironmans. I raced my best Ironman literally one month ago. Uh, I've got all my book of excuses. I was sick for the la literally the two weeks of the 70.3 training that I did. I was sick every single day. Five minutes to get into it. Is this inside out? <coughs> <coughs> Five minutes to get into it. <coughs> <coughs> 40 minutes <coughs> at 70.3 race pace. I, I, I'm not going to kill myself. As you can hear, I still am not feeling very good. So I'm not going to destroy myself. I'm going to transcend this workout uh, on the 5th in Indian Wells. Um, I have all my excuses. Who cares about your excuses? Um, I can't control the dynamics. I can't control. I can only race the people and the circumstances on the day. All I can say is it's a hollow win. I would much rather get third in a war with no adversity than win with my competitors having a large amount of adversity. The only thing we can do is make it to, unfortunately, 70.3 Worlds, us Kona guys are probably going to be at a bit of a disadvantage being two weeks before 70.3 Worlds. But those are the circumstances. So at 70.3 Worlds, let's go to war and let's have that battle and let's find out. What about Oceanside? Hey, I'll be in Oceanside. So you guys want a rematch? Join me in Oceanside.